it's working. <laughs> okay, so whenever you're ready. Okay. So let's call the meeting to order and if we could get roll call. And I forgot my roll call sheet. Yes, I did. So I will go around the room this way instead. <laughs> Adam. Cade. I'm present. Ben Hemphill. Here. Bob Broadus. Present. Chelsea Campbell. Here. Candace Whitehouse. Here. Lisa Cunningham. Here. Sarah Cornelly. Present. Or, uh, Ash Shake. Here. <laughs> Brian O'Connor. Here. You have a quorum. Awesome. Um, anyone have any issues with the agenda as written? All right. So agenda is approved and public comments. We don't have anyone in the room for public comments. So excellent. Um, yeah. All right, then on to general business. So um, Brian and I were discussing actually a little bit. Uh, we do get good public comments, you know, via email and um, in person occasionally. So one of the things that maybe we should do is have a time set out where we discuss any of the public comments we got near the beginning of a meeting or at the end of a meeting, just some time to kind of talk through. That way people can see that we're actually discussing their suggestions and not just ignoring them. Um, so for the future, maybe after, you know, after the public comment section, there might be a time to set aside so we can discuss or if there's anything that needs addressing. So like, Today it would be, we got two emails since our last meeting. Um, one about, you know, one also speaking out in favor of keeping us the town of Erie just because that differentiates us from the city of Erie in Pennsylvania, which I still get. <laughs> when I type Erie Co, mm -hmm. Erie County pops up a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Before you get into discussing it, um, we could just modify the discussion topic at the very beginning to say, um, discuss, Public comments received, you know, public comments received and previously discussed articles. Would that that works for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That keeps it general just for yeah. basically general discussion stuff, mm -hmm. as it says. So, yeah, we had another town versus city. We did? Comment. Did yeah. Oh, the, the public comment. Oh, and yeah. someone during last week as well was speaking out. I think it was in response to that probably because someone last week spoke out in favor of changing us to a city oh, okay. due to our projected full build out size um, and so then we got an email or from our form submission someone said we should say the town just to differentiate us from the city of Erie yeah. we should probably discuss it because just because we feel one way doesn't mean everybody feels that way yes and actually that was another topic that Brian had brought up about and we discussed it before was sending out a survey Right. Just for like, mm -hmm. this would be a perfect item for one of those general question surveys is what do people actually feel about this? So, um, yeah, stepping into that, like the other public comment was about outreach and things like that. So getting surveys going would be nice. And I was hoping to put something together with approval from the rest of the board and start sending like basic like two to three questions, yes or no, or you know, two choice surveys for people. And if we'd like probably town staff to send that out as well via town social media or via email if we can get that just to get people engaged and more involved than just wasn't that a homework item we had? Huh? I thought there was a homework item we had. Yeah, that was me. So I didn't want to make a unilateral decision, though, about yeah. what questions to send out, so... Yeah, no, that we were supposed to come up with a couple of questions. Yeah. And the ones I had came up with were basically town versus city. Um, I think the district question, yeah. which feeds into the total number of representative we'd want, and then you know, I'm not sure if we had any others. The next one I had, I don't know if I like to go first. Next one I had was the election cycle. Oh, yeah. Odd and even. Right. That's right. Even. That was on there, too. Yeah. And at least I'm hoping April versus November is not up for discussion, but... <laughs> no, I think everyone likes it the other way. Oh, and then maybe just changing the way we'd, like, uh, what is it, rank choice versus yeah. first past the post for each of them. And one more maybe mayor's term. Mayor's term. Like, oh, keeping it Duration. two years. Two years versus four? Or? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know what others think. 
I know you mentioned just the town social media. The comment is about doing more than that because a lot of people aren't on just social media. Right, so and that's why the full force of the communications. Yeah, our award-winning communications department. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Gary. <Kevin. laughs> okay, so the questions I wanted to ask: adverse even years, town versus city. Number of districts, right? Assuming we're going to keep two per, so whether we want seven or six or eight representatives? No, I would think, well, I'm sorry. Research. I think there's some things that we have talked through enough and justified the decision that we've all made enough that we, we want some public feedback on things like town versus city, uh, but things like Nine versus seven representatives. That that okay. doesn't feel like it's up for. But I must thank you if you're going to do it. Do <coughs> at large versus yes. Districts. That's what I was. Yeah. Just at ask that question. Versus, I would have just and then agreed. we could figure out sure. if we're still going to go down the path of districts, then we can figure out the districts. Like it, it it may help to add context though why mm -hmm. we're considering districts. So yeah. there's some reading that someone has to do before they answer that question. But yeah, I would frame the question like with at least the discussion we've had internally. I would also say with the um, town versus city, we should probably put in a general cost of what that would look like to change. Yeah. It's important. It's not just a name change, it's huge. I mean, even if we don't know an exact cost, we could at least say that there would be a cost, Associated. likely nominal and spread out over years, but there's still a cost. I know, it's every sign and every... Yeah, well, we, we helped him out for his feeling. Every document was, we need to go in and edit it, and that's a lot of manpower. Uh, he, Malcolm, I had the same concern, and Malcolm thought I was overreacting a little bit. He thought it was very manageable. Yeah, he said it would be spread out. It wouldn't all happen at once. Sure. But I definitely agree. It'd be good to generalize it. I wouldn't want to word it in any way that seemed coercive. Right. Like, hmm. if you choose this, just so you know. Right. Um, kind of thing. I would make it very like. Okay. Factual. Then I think, yeah, for my homework that I'll get out to everyone by tomorrow, I'll put up the three or four questions. Um, if I'll send it out to the whole home rule. If you have any feedback, just send direct a response directly to me, um, and then I can work with the town because I know I've I've emailed Gabby about having the questions at least ho so we can host the link on our home rule page. We can ask them ask town staff to put out the on social media and via email. Solicit to solicit answers from that, and then to address what Trustee Bear was saying. Yeah, just, yeah. maybe I shouldn't say Trustee Bear. Emily Bear was saying that you know we should try to find other ways to reach out, especially through like the active adult community, yeah, rec center. Um, so maybe there's a way to go take survey answers in person or manually. Yeah, we don't have too many like. If we had our farmer's market, that would be a perfect time to like have a booth there and ask people questions. But we don't have many events between now and well, the close of our town fair is in May. Is that too late? Yes. Because okay. yeah, our, our desire our is Arbor Day is the it. next one, I think. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And our big public hearing has to be in April. There is a, it doesn't help any of us because we're here on Thursdays, but if there was a somebody else, there is a um, skate night that Aspen Ridge is hosting at the skating rink, I think next Thursday. I, I, I would jump in to say one of you could attend that right. and miss this meeting if, if you were looking for outreach. And I think as far as like active adult community, we might have some way to just, we can find out from the community center when they're hosting events well, it's, and just piggyback off of those. She said there's a senior lunch uh, Thursdays 12 to 1. Okay. And actually starting next week, I'm seeing my trainer at the ECC from 11 to 12, if they don't mind me being in gym clothes. <laughs> yeah, we okay. can send you their contact information. Um, people can volunteer at that. So Emily... Um, and Dan and I will all volunteer at that. So you can just, we can have Amy send you the contact information. You can just tell them you're coming. And they'll even like let you give a little spiel yeah. about what you're doing and who you are. So that's no problem. And so we can do it from Polar. Okay. And then, yeah, we can just have 
let's see, yeah, some way to answer yeah, this question. We'll see, yeah, I'll talk with town staff and figure out if we can have a way to print out some of those forms for people to fill out in person and then we can collect them and enter them. Um, so yeah, so far just the three questions for our first foray into direct feedback. Anyone have anything else? I think we should limit it each time to three questions. I yeah. Think we'll be on that. I think keeping it light is perfect. And then if people have like free form feedback, we can direct them back to our open comment form. Mm -hmm. Are we putting like a time limit on it? Um, two weeks, I guess. Uh, <laughs> just leave it open. And just, yeah, I guess how did, when you get survey responses, like. You, you set a time frame okay. for it. Um, I, I need to, we need to figure out I'll have to work with Gabby on how this is best going to work because it is a fairly quick turnaround. Um, and if it's just a link to SurveyMonkey or something like that, people can abuse it by voting, doing the survey more than once. Yeah. So I bet I can talk to Gabby about how mm -hmm. that might be. If someone feels that strongly that they're going to take it over to the like, mm -hmm. we'll, get it. we'll give it to them. But. There's scriptable ways to mess with that, which is the issue, right? Sorry. Yeah, just sent me an email. And you also talked about reaching out to government classes and uh, community engagement groups and HOAs. Now, was there a, a group of HOA leaders? That One, you... It's not very active from my meeting yesterday. Oh, okay. You went. All right. No. no. We talked about it, though, as part of my sustainability and Malcolm's trying to reinvigorate it. Was We're, it, it. I was the coordinator for that. It was called the One Committee, and it's um, we pretty much had about five people that were regulars, and it was once a quarter. So with the new position that Parks and Rec is getting um, and all the comp plan and TMP and everything that's happening, they are, we're reimagining re it. Okay. Um, so I, I, I don't know that that would be a hugely successful way. Um, because we had, there's not even a meeting planned. Um, I don't know. I mean, there there are HOAs that you could reach out to, which I can I can provide you a list of the HOA presidents. That's a good idea. And we would just ask them to send these out to their contact yeah. list. Well, yeah. Uh, we, I went in front of the one committee during uh, the campaign and I talked to them about um, what it meant to start the process to go home rule and there were it was I thought it was pretty well attended it was probably 20 people that was probably the last big one uh, that we had it's, it's really it, it faded yeah. Um, yeah. but I didn't see any action out of that and I, my ask was to you know, direct people to f where to find information about this and I didn't see anything but then again I, I'm I'm not paying attention to all the HOAs my own didn't do anything I do still have the list from the one committee, the, the HOA contacts, I mean, that email list, and we could certainly send out a, a blast that we do to everybody else that says, hey, check out this, do that, take this quick survey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. I think that's it as far as the survey. Then I'll try to, I'll get the questions out to everyone to review for feedback tomorrow, and then work with town to get it sent out. With regards to the other public comment, the stuff that we might have taken notes on, do we want to compile that list? Because there was good information that people publicly spoke about, but they didn't follow it up with an email. From last week? You mean? From last week. I mean, <clears throat> comments about executive session versus executive study. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good question. Like a study session versus executive session. Exactly. Um, and there's you can, know, can I make a comment on that? I, I believe he was misunderstanding how we the terminology we use. A study session is open. Um, it doesn't allow for public comment, but it is open and anybody can watch or come. They just can't comment. Executive session are is a state statute, and it's closed. And it's. We didn't have any definition of study session. I think was the concern. Is that yeah, right? like he said that as it was written. Aside from the like statutory requirement for them, 
the description of executive session was essentially study session. Like, that's how. That's how he, I, I would, I don't know if Hillary listened to that, but I would say that he might have been mistaken. Okay. I don't know. I don't know that. I can see what so, I So, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would say there are similarities in that the exec session, you're not allowed to take action similar to a study session. So I'm not sure what the distinction is that we are or are not making. So we're using a study session basically if there's an item that people would like to know more about before they vote and to sort of like get more information on maybe like road infrastructure, a survey, it's a chance for people to kind of learn more before they have to vote on something. And the executive session is used more to like purchase property or that kind of thing where you might be in negotiations and you want to discuss price, like something that would be um, more confidential as you kind of work through that. But a study session is really kind of what it sounds like. You're just providing the board with more information about something that they're going to vote on. So nothing confidential, but an opportunity for them to ask questions and for the public to hear too more context to the item. And definitely less formal. Yeah. Setting. And I think the, the big, I guess, the big uh, sticking point uh, that from the public comment last week was like, when we were discussing, especially, it was like, who's allowed to be there? Who's allowed to, you know, cut people out and that sort of thing. And that was one of the, like, focuses of the comment last week as well, was like, well, the way that you have it written where people can be excluded based on, you know, whatever this is, that sounds like a study session, but I think we can, it sounds fairly simple um, as far as covering our statutory requirement for being able to have executive sessions. Yeah, there's really no confusion that I'm aware of as between the two exec sessions are a very discrete matter and study sessions, on the other hand, would not be regulated at all. But we're also not required to have them, right? Maybe that's more of a question for Hillary and Amy. Are we required to have a study session? No, 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 not at all. Okay. It's just an extra, it's not a business meeting, it's just an opportunity for the board or council to, to get more information on something. Okay. You okay with leaving it how it is then? I just think that, you know, as long as we discuss yeah. discuss or at least ask the question on behalf of the residents. Then. Okay. Oh, um, maybe I'll throw this in the survey, but one of the public comments said we should be using the word wards. And I don't, like, I, I don't know if you really explained why, but it seems like one of those things that people might feel strongly about. So that can be on the survey as well. Would you like to... I think we all felt a certain way, but I don't think that it was completely unchangeable. Yeah. No, it was. It's just a matter of I guess if, you, if the town's preference is more, so it's... Why don't we see if the town even wants districts first? Yeah. And if they do, we can ask them if they want to call them. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Just, I was just, just to like... not overwhelm the survey. Okay. Um, let's see. Was there any other in particular that you wanted to? I you know what I think I'll just maybe I'll write them down and send them out okay. so we can so we can discuss them. We can discuss them. Yeah, at least that they're acknowledged and we. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably a better way then. Like, if there's too many, like, from our public comment section sessions, there's too many to kind of discuss off, like off the cuff, or if we didn't address them immediately, we can kind of collect them and discuss them during the beginning of the next meeting. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's see then. Oh yeah, we Bob had noticed that we have a day off in March for spring break, but it was, it lines up with, I believe, BVSD's spring break. Um, and SVVSD is one week beforehand. Do we want to maintain that scheduling or... Do we want to just meet? I guess, are people going to be out the last two weeks of March? I'm going to be gone. Yeah. I'll be here. Um, I'm here. 
because we have a tentative on the 23rd and nothing on the 30th. Yeah. So it's just you guys. I don't have children that live at home anymore, so I will I will be here. Malcolm will be out the week of, I think it's the BVSD spring break. The 30th. Yeah. So he's out. Let me look at my calendar. Yeah, I think that's what we said. He's out the week of the 20th through the 24th. So he's, yeah, that's St. Brains. Yeah. And then I'm out the following week. But between the two of us, we can cover. Okay. Those weeks. When are you out? St. Brains? St. Brains, yep. But no one else? Uh, it might be out St. Brains, too. Um, okay. I was thinking about, yeah, on that one, but we just said Thursday. I Will think that's a. Will anybody be out Boulder? I'm sorry. Boulder. Will anybody be out on Boulder spring break? Uh, unfortunately, I'm out the week of the public hearing. Sarah, are you out any of those weeks? Uh, same brain. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be out that week, but um, I will probably be unavailable regardless that week. Okay. The 23rd. The 20th. Yeah, the 20th through the. 24th, yeah. So, I mean, so I think... Possibly three of us. Yeah. yeah. So, it maintains a quorum, but yeah, then it's just not... We're not... Yeah. Could we could we switch, like, our public comment to that week? I think that is the third week. Oh, is it? It's it the is. fourth week. It's the fourth week. It's the fourth week. Oh. It's our Hillary week. <laughs> then we might, yeah, we oh, might okay. just switch... Yeah. We might swap that to a public comment session then for that week. We can reassess as we get closer, but yeah, like if we need more meetings, I would ra rather hold them, even if the whole board can't be there, just so we can. Get I, more I worry feedback. that we're getting behind and we're not gonna yeah, no. get this done. That's okay. Notice, and so we're supposed to basically be done by the end of March. Yeah. Well, reading through what we're going through tonight, I just feel like it's not gonna happen. Okay. So yeah, can we? I think. Um, if we can, we'd like to have meetings both those weeks, the 23rd and the 30th. Okay. Um, and we'll find topics as we so, progress. Okay. The, yeah, because currently on the 23rd, you have um, review the entire, entire draft charter. And then... That would be a meet day, but I will be out of town. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so that will be a day we can't have this room. Okay, which, the 23rd or the 30th? Uh, no, the, I'm sorry, the 16th is what, sorry. Yeah. So the, the March 16th, which is your public comment, is the time we cannot be in here. Okay. Um, so So we may just have it as normal and then... And then go ahead and yeah. just leave. I mean, we don't have any... We'll just do whatever you guys are ready to do on the 30th, but I will add that to the calendar and resend that out. Okay. And take off tentative. Yeah, we don't want to do too much of substance on the 23rd since we're going to be missing at least three people. Um, but we have a lot of go backs to recollect and reorganize our thoughts on. So I feel, I feel like we can be productive. I, I think, yeah. I agree. I just request that those who are going to be out if they could before you go review the. the yeah, just review what we're going to review and everyone's input can be considered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess one of the, the the other email we got that on behalf of Malcolm he sent out an email to people um, the Sirsa people Sam and Sam yeah mm -hmm. and so there was more discussion and more context given to the treasurer and town clerk having appointed versus hired. Decision. Did anyone, I mean, I know we decided based on previous discussion with Malcolm that we wanted the town clerk to be hired by the town manager so that it would be less political and kind of not having to report up to the town council for every little thing. Did the email or did the public comments last week and the email change anyone's mind on that? No. Anyone? No? no? Okay. So we want to maintain keeping those two positions hired by the town manager. And just to clarify, that's reporting to the town manager too, like hired and reporting? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what we have had it written down to okay. us. It's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it as far as the general business or the pre 
with general discussion topics. So let's move on to Article 11. I just have you know, one quick comment at the beginning of that, which is, to me, is really confusing about the form of petition. Because we talk about it, but then we don't define it till 1104. And even then, it was still a little confusing. Um, so my understanding, and the reason I bring it up now is because it, it really is talked about at the very beginning, or, or soon into it, is form of petition is they have their own form. And there was the question about whether uh, the town clerk needs to keep a form, and I don't think they need to. And we talked about that earlier in the meetings. But so the people come with a form, and and that form gets approved before they get signatures. Yes. And um, I'm not sure that was clear until later on. And they start talking about well, if the dates don't match and things like that, which if you didn't understand what it was, didn't seem to make a lot of sense. So I, maybe it was just me, but it just seems that's something worth talking about before we say how it's used. That you say what it is. Okay. So would that just be kind of a reshuffling of the uh, sections? I think so, but again, if others have opinions. I'm trying to find where's the first time the form of petition is referenced. It is 11014. I'm sorry, yeah, 11014. And I read that and I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. And then it was in 11024. Would it be easy then to reference? Like, I think talking about the initiative and referendums themselves, and then first kind of gives you the context of the, of the section, right? Right. Um, we can add, I think we can add a reference down to like the 1105 or, or the shall comply with 11. <coughs> form shall comply with 11.04 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And then, and that's fine. But so something like in eleven oh one four and eleven oh two four at or eleven oh two five, town clerk shall not count as valid any signature on the petition if the date of the signature is prior to the date of the form of the petition. The day of the approval of the form, but yeah. The day. So where would we put in a reference then? Because I think we can either I don't know. You can either move I'm sorry eleven oh four up, or you could just say form petition C, and just ref do it for a reference, as Ben had talked about. Okay. I don't know. No, I think it's okay. Just in the, the instance that like if somebody is going to do this, they're going to go to this section and hopefully read it in full before they <laughs> are submitting forms. Yeah, so they'll run, they'll come across the information. For I'm me, thinking, that for me that wasn't a, an issue, but I'm just thinking if someone reads this to try to approve it, or because they're going to vote on it, so hopefully some people are going to read it before they vote. Hmm. And, Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. If it was just me, then, then it's fine. We have other references in other places. I don't know where they are, but we yeah. can reference other sections. But normally it's yeah. other complete like, articles. Not right. Subsections, like right? in section two, we have a reference to section 11, I think, for the initiative and referendum process. So I don't know how you reference another section. I guess, I mean, you could just say 11 and 4 below. Or, again, if we're going to have a definition section, maybe that's sufficient. If the definition section's early, so people know they can look over to it. And maybe somehow indicate something in the definition section. I think some charters put it in quotes or something like that okay. to show it was a formal definition. Again, if it's just me, no problem. Yeah, I personally didn't have an issue understanding because I went down to the form of the petition. Because it's not long enough that I lose track of what I was confused about. But. Yeah. 
but yeah, I'm I'm speaking from my own perspective here. Does anyone else? Well, most documents they start with where you're finding stuff anyway. So if you are going to do a petition, you go down to the section about petitions and read all about petitions. You know. Yeah. And yeah, because I mean, my first comment when I'm looking at it is, it sort of does this imply that the form is updated every 180 days? Because I thought it was a a set form that the town had or something, and it's not. Right. Well, it could be. That's one of the questions. I feel like we're kind of getting lost in the weeds on this okay. really minute detail right. that we can probably come back to okay. in a little bit. But this is this is some this has got some meat, so <laughs> we should dive in. Yeah. I think my only big overarching question was: Is there a way to do? I know it's not popular, or, but is there a way to do digital petition gathering, signature gathering? I I know there is because I know. Um, Boulder does it. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't know how. To, I don't know how to do it. I don't okay. know if Hillary's had any experience with it or not. I have not. I don't think that. Well, before I say that, I should check. But I, I don't think anything in here is particularly limited to ink, except it might state actually ink. <laughs> so it does. There's a section that talks about it has to be an indelible ink. I, yeah. It was inconsistent. So, I mean, if, if that reference weren't there, I think arguably the the method for collecting signatures would would be left open. So you'd be able to use like Adobe PDFs with digital signatures that are able to be verified. Yeah, that would be my question: is the ver the verification? Because at the end, whoever is circulating the petition would have to sign something saying, I know that all of the people who signed this yeah. are the people that they said they were. Yeah, I mean, that's the head of the state's election law, for sure. So you sort of blaze the trail. OK. Um, can I request that you find out like on how those would, if that's possible, and if like what the legal implications of making sure like signatures yeah, are valid and verified? Yeah, I think the limitation you're going to find is that the registered voter list that the clerk compares is from the county and it's, I mean, it may be conveyed digitally, but it's still just going to be a voter list. Right. So at some point, your clerk is comparing with the county's list. So I, it's really more a question of authenticity and what is sort of accepted as verified. Could we leave this open and just say the yeah. town council can decide how petitions or I think that, that that could be amended later. Honestly, I think that we should yeah. still require ink at this time. Um, that just seems like the smart way to do it right now because that we would. I mean, nobody else has done it really. So right, but I'm I'm thinking I mean, about like when we're this. full when we're full of grown sixty thousand people. You know, we're conservatively thirty thousand voters. You're talking about getting three thousand signatures in pages, like eight and a half by 11 inch pages, where half of yeah, it has- Yeah, but that's how, and that's how referendum petitions for amending the Colorado Constitution still work, and they need hundreds of thousands of signatures. Okay. That's still done on paper. Yep, same, yeah. that's how the um, okay. polis one was too. Yeah. Like packets, I think. I'll do some more research on my own, but we don't have to stick on this for now. So, but should initiative, referendum, and recall all be consistent? I would think the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. But non non erasable ink was only for recall. For example. Which is even yeah. Okay. So I just think we should. Uh, it, it almost makes sense to pull things like that out and say it applies to all, so you don't have to worry about the inconsistencies. But yeah. Yes, I don't disagree. Okay. You don't want sneaky people signing with that erasable ink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is that? ink like clarification in like all the other charters I'm, i don't think i've ever paid attention to a detail that small whenever i've read them but like yeah i think it's actually a carryover from the statute which does yeah. specify is there anything that we're doing here that's different than the statute what what is the purpose of spelling all of this out when we're pretty if we're pretty much just following statute it looks like here hillary has written in 11013 that Statute is at 15%. Yeah. 
Or is that just where it can go as high? It can go as high. So the purpose of setting it all out here is that your charter won't be subject to amendment by the General Assembly. So the General Assembly wants to change the re referendum or initiative process in the statutes. It, it can do that. Same as other reasons that we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Or other areas that you've okay. clarified that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's jump into the meat of it then. Um, does anyone have any issues with 1101? Uh, Hillary has a few extended comments there. Yeah, a quick question for Hillary is, in your first comment, does that imply we, I couldn't tell that that meant we should change anything or not? I think it's just a cross-reference, right? Right, so. First comment about, oh, well, you, you can't deviate from the Colorado Constitution's requirements. I just thought you might like to see what they are. Oh, okay, cool. That's what, the way I took it, mm -hmm. but yeah. thank you. Um, so the big question then in 1101 is the threshold for the number of petitions required for an initiative. Did anyone feel strongly one way or another? I, my thought is it's 10% too high. 10% is too high? It, it seems, I don't know, I guess it's typical, but... I, guess, yeah, get, I definitely wouldn't go higher than 10. Yeah, for sure. This is to get on a ballot for people to vote. Yes. This right. is people still have to vote on it, even if you're... So if you make it lower, it makes it easier to put stuff on ballots. From is, Yeah, so it makes citizens' citizen. initiative easier. Yeah. Well, and Colorado makes it really super easy to be registered to vote. doesn't mean all yeah. those people are actually voting and being involved. Because, right. yeah, I think something in Texas... a huge issue with the recall section. So the, I guess is the question then is reducing it. Is there a worry about frivolous things? I mean, five percent. Five percent is the number I'm thinking of. Is yeah. still. So how many did we have registered? How many do we have registered? What was it? I, I, I asked before and I can't remember. Uh, I, 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 should, I should know this. No, I should know this. Um, it was a. It's about eighteen thousand. Eighteen. So as currently written. You'd need 1,800 signatures to get something to on the ballot versus 900. versus 900 if we bump it down to 5%. And it takes, what did we say, 50 to get a candidate on the ballot if you're going to run for something? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know they're not apples and apples here, but... Yeah. So, we, yeah, 50 Well, one. the reason we settled on 50, I too, is because I thought, we thought we were settled on districts. So, I mean, if you figure... Uh, that, that was only for the at-large position. Yeah. Oh, yeah, was it? Large. Yes. 25 was for the districts. Okay. Yeah. 18, 20, 20, 000. 000. There, but is that what it was? It was 21,500. Okay. I think what the case that we have to remember here is that turnout? we want these to be possible. Yeah. Not necessarily easy, right? Um, but we right. want them to be we want them to be ob obtainable for the for when there's a need. So that's what we have to, to keep in mind. Yeah, I think five percent sounds. So five percent would have been a thousand people need to sign a document to get right. something just to get today. it on the ballot. Yeah. If we did five percent, and if we jump up to sixty thousand, you know, in ten years, yeah, that'll be total people, and then yeah, that's yeah. I'd say five is good. I think five's good. I'm okay yeah. with five. Yeah. Okay. So then five percent for initiative. And Hillary, just are you able to hear us as we're having these discussions or do we need to I am, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um Okay. Any other questions with or issues with eleven oh one? 60%. No. No. 60 percent. 1102 for referendum. It was just in six and seven to see Hillary's comments and to see if we want to make any changes about it. So I'm just trying to see which. Well, first of all, um, we've got the, the, she added that subsection three to say what is not subject to. Yeah, well, I that was just moved. That, though. It was moved, if I recall. It wasn't new. Right. But but why would those things not be subject to it? It's mostly because they're expedient. So 
<clears throat> or the things that you don't want to have undone, such as the levy of taxes, which now would require voter approval. But if a tax ordinance, for example, were subject to referendum and then overturned, you'd have a sort of a messy issue of how to refund the tax revenue and things like that. So the thought is to make things that are kind of expedient and also not maybe of proper interest for voters, like salaries in terms of employees, that's kind of not a legislative thing. Um, so that's, that's why to carve those out. And the reason, yeah, and emergency ordinances are carved out because they need to be, they need to take effect immediately and there's no time for a referendum to actually happen. Well, but an emergency ordinance after it's passed is a normal ordinance. Right. After it's been ratified, it becomes an overall ordinance subject to referendum. Okay. I don't know, it just seems like we should, I don't know, to me it seems like everything should be fair game. The thing is, like, so, so I, I would say that so uh, the, the budget is passed by ordinance, and if if it's subject to referendum, we have a state. There's a state statute that every municipality has to pass a budget budget ordinance for the next fiscal year, and if if then there is a referendum, then there's no budget, then the town would have a difficulty operating because we have a we'd be in violation. Budget. Yeah. So <laughs> Uh, that broke up pretty badly. Yeah, you're you're breaking up. Can you try one more time? And it shows your. Mom. So, yeah, there's a lot of static. I'm not sure why. Uh, there's a scenario where you could have voter approval of a budget that's just not use, useful for the town. So what if, you know, an extreme example would be voters approve a budget of zero. I would say yeah, the the recourse for a budget that you don't like would be to would be the elected officials like get rid of them if you don't like what they're doing with their money. But yeah, it causes you still have. I mean, you still have to go through all the whole process, get all the signatures, get it on the the ballot, and be voted before it would be terminated. I right, and like that's that. That's where the problem comes in because if like the way it's written, you. Uh, a referred ordinance can't take effect. I guess, no, we have it written later on we, that it will take effect, right? Uh, it takes effect. Uh -huh. You have to vote it. You have to vote on the referendum before something changes. Yeah. It's not like an injunction or something. The town, the council can decide to not. Oh, yeah, they can it. suspend an ordinance, yes. yes, until the referendum occurs. I'm fine with the with the restrictions, the exceptions I'm, to the referendum. I'm fine with that as well. I mean, especially for taxes that have to be voted on in the first place. If the people already voted on them, issuing a right if they pass a referendum to something already they already voted on seems like messy and absolutely a waste of uh, resources. Because yeah, fifty percent of the town has already passed a tax. Yeah. Then ten percent or five percent if we reduce that as well shouldn't be able to say we don't want that tax and we have to same with special elections if people elections, spoke yeah. i don't really feel like that's something special election am i that so i'm not the one that can speak i get i get what you're feeling about at least the taxes part but like that's part was, of Tabor, right yeah, yeah so that, what happens if Tabor goes away we're we've got it codified here okay do we so yeah we've kept it as that's what we yeah that was one of the things we actually debated where it was like kind of reference, like left. Tabor goes away, it stays for our town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So is, we'll, is, is the tax is the biggest one that you're? I just I, I I don't know. It just makes me nervous having loopholes. It's not necessarily anything that I'm like foreseeing in the future. It just. I mean, there's certainly a, a, a few things in here. I don't think you know we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to have a referendum for the budget. Yeah. So that would cause too many problems. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree. Or salaries, yeah. There's, I don't think that's necessarily. Yeah, I don't disagree with that fair. either. I just, it, I don't know. But, like, but if I'm the only one that feels this way, we can just move on. We don't need to waste the time 
Honestly. Anyone else? Like, I don't feel bad about that. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, we'll keep it as written for now. But, yeah. Um, do we want to also reduce the threshold for a referendum to 5%? I think it should be consistent. Okay, consistent. 5%. Okay. So then we'll reduce that to 5% too. Um, I'm trying to look at dates. Because in six, it's 45 days. And I thought for the other, I thought it said 30 days somewhere. But that could be for something else. Don't I'm looking at it. Maybe skip an ad. Uh, yeah, I don't think, I think that's the next thing because five is the same standard form of signature. Okay, yeah, five is, yeah. Um, but, yeah, six. So my question here was why is there a time limit at all? Because if something... That's, if, I thought that too. If something's passed and, like, we find out it's not working six months later, are we not allowed to have a referendum against it at that point? Or, yeah. or 20 years later, we're like, wow. It's, it's just not a referendum. But it's, it's, the referendum process is meant to prohibit it from going into effect. So if, if you're past the effective date, then it's no longer a referendum. It's going to be like an initiative to, you know, enact something that's different than what's in place. Okay. But or an initiative to repeal what's in place. So then we don't need to be consistent either. But then the next section, it, or the next number seven, it says it remains in effect anyways if something has a referendum. No, but she has a comment about that. Until. Wait. Yeah. It says until. The ordinance until. remains in effect un until or unless the town council suspends it, a, a court order reverses it, or the vote happens. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at her comment six, uh -huh. it says shall not take effect. So that's how that's statutory. Yeah, I know. We, so are we're we saying, carving out from that. Yeah, and that's my question: is are we really saying we want to go against the state in this one? I mean, I think that's maximizing your little control to do that. To carve it out and say that it will stay in effect until it can be voted on. Yeah, to, well, to give the discretion about whether or not it goes into effect. So your your future council might decide it makes sense to go ahead and apply something or not based on the actual circumstances. So we're just kind of leaving that door open. Okay. So it would stay in effect, but the town council can elect to suspend it until the election, the referendum election. So they're, since they're the ones that passed it in the first place. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I guess they would see, like... someone organizes a thousand signatures in 45 days. Yeah. That's sending... That sends a pretty strong message. message. <laughs> that might go back to the taxes then, too. What do you think? Well, so if they if that many people feel strongly, but is that no, but is it but that's voted on by the people? So fifty percent yeah. of people pass, and then five percent of people 5 say they don't like it, and five percent are against it, and then the town council yeah. suspends it because of the five percent. Even though it, I mean, it, it really puts it in the hands of the council yeah. to decide what they rather how they want to respond. The voters. I'd rather have the voters typically. Okay. So do we want a buck statute here and say that we'll keep it in effect until one of the following events can happen? Are we changing Not anything sure with that? Yeah. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I like it as written. Anyone else? Is there anything? Is, I think Hillary suggests shortening it, uh, the, the, the petition filing, to yeah. make it even harder to... So maybe that's not the purpose, but to... Yeah, because statutory limit is 30 days. Yeah, I wasn't suggesting shorting it. I just wanted to point out that this particular version had a longer period than the statute. Can, can we talk more about the next piece of that comment as well, that Charter can create health and safety exemptions from referendum power? Like what that would look like and exactly like how that comes into play? Well, it, it would look like 11.2.3, the 
provision that we added. The emergency ordinances aren't subject to referendum. Okay, so we're we're saying that those health and safety things would be emergency ordinances. Typically, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to ensure that a health and safety ordinance was not subject to referendum, um, I suppose it could be adopted as an emergency ordinance. That way, it would be insulated. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Or you could put it in three explicitly, but we're trying not to. Yeah, no, yeah. no need for that. <laughs> but don't we have a time period that okay. you end your the emergency ordinance? Yeah. What's that time period? It was like ten days, right? Yeah, it was like as soon as po I think it was as soon as possible. Yes. At that time, it could be subject to referendum, correct? Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. So there's no way to solidify anything, right? Yeah, that's what I'm. There's no way to 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 pad something or to protect something from referendum. Not really. Unless it's a very specific topic like we've laid out. Except those are three, right? Yeah. Well, unless we call out other health and safety things that are in effect beyond um, the emergency ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the problem with that is that if you do that, then people can find a way to make anything. Health and safety. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I make a comment? I think what you're, the, it's a resolute, in, in a an health and safety issue, like when COVID happened, it was a resolution that had to be then ratified by the whole board. It wasn't an actual ordinance. It was just a resolution that was that was ratified, and I think that's what you guys all might have been talking about when there was a timing that had to be ratified. Yeah. I think you're right. I think there was granting emergency powers right. versus emergency There's ordinance. ordinance. Yes, yeah, emergency I'm ordinance. Gonna... Yeah. That's the emergency powers provision under state law. So it allowed allows the manager to act unilaterally or the mayor, but then actions are required to be ratified by the governing body in a pretty, in pretty short order. I think I remember when we talked about emergency ordinances, they, it's essentially the same thing as an ordinance. It was just, it takes effect immediately versus waiting, waiting whatever the period is. Yes. The notice period. Yeah. Case. So but then, like, do we need to carve out saying that resolutions that are ratified need to be able to be subject to referendum? I would not suggest expanding the referendum power to resolutions, no. Okay. Oops. <laughs> like a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> I had a decision to make. That's kind of Okay. Um, then anything else for 1102 from anyone? Okay, 1103, that just seems standard procedural. Um, 1104, the forms and content. So I think um, one of the questions we had pre, or one of the things we decided previously, Hillary, was that the town clerk is only gonna need to maintain the forms for conducting regular candidate elections, was the phrasing we used. So anything else, would be on the people filing to find the form and research the form and make sure that their submissions are of that correct form. Okay. So didn't have that change for the clerk's duties, but I will go back and add that. That's a helpful clarification. Okay. Yeah. That was in my notes for our go back section later. But yeah, that's what we had kind of decided for the uh, clerk. Um, so on that... Does anyone have any proposed changes for the form and content of position of petitions? No. Do we? Okay. I have a quick question. I'm sorry to go back. Yeah. To 11026. So with, it has to be filed within 45 days after the adoption. Does that mean the intent has to be filed, or the petition with all the signatures has to be within 45 days? I think complete. the complete, complete yeah, so the signatures. So then, then down here, if they have five business days, sorry, 11.042, wouldn't that just give them 40 days? Like, doesn't that cut in? Yeah, it does. It does, yeah. So then they have 40 days to actually submit all the signatures. Well, yeah. see, that's the thing. So, they can file at 45 days, but if it's found wanting, like if they messed up and they don't have the proper form, then they don't have time to correct it. 
basically. Right. So if they want to have time to correct it just in case, then yeah, then they need to file at 40 days, get their answer from the clerk within five business days, and then fix it and resubmit. Right. The, the form has to actually be approved before they can start circulating it. Right. Correct. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm saying. It, this doesn't, that doesn't seem possible. Well, no, we said a second ago, state law said 30 days. I mean, state law all happens in 30 days, so it's possible. We've already extended it by 50%. Mm -hmm. How often do referendums happen? Here? I, we haven't had one since I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have a... Something I, I'm having a hard time remember what happened last election where we had somebody who wanted to circulate a petition. I can't remember what it was for. Was it a recall? No, it wasn't a recall. No, it was it was during the election, it, but she never managed to get the form absolutely correct because every time she submitted it, it had errors, and we had to send it back to her and say you need to correct this. And by the time she ended up having like three days to two days. To yeah, collect signatures. signatures, which was at, at that point it was only like twenty five signatures or something. Yeah. So it is it is on on the petitioner to have a correct form. Right, but they get feedback from what's cor what's not correct they from get the feedback tumbler. from what is not correct. Yes. So yeah, no, this one this section does say each signature shall be executed in ink. Mm -hmm and shall be followed. So this is what we would need to strike if we wanted to leave leave it open for digital signatures at some point, right? But we should use the same language, I think. Understood. And that's just an oversight on my part. I had removed non-erasable from 11.4, um, and I missed it below. So I've already noted that change. Oh, OK. Thank you. And honestly, the digital thing, I mean, we can come back to it later, but I mean, yeah. that can be changed by, you know. Yeah, if I like to keep it in the ink. Okay. I kind of agree yeah. that way, too. That's why I'm not, like, going to push it too much. So, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> but I do agree with you, Sarah. There probably will be a time that, like, yeah. ink is, like, totally archaic. To and nobody's world. using it, you know. Sort of like cursive. <laughs> Right, kind of like cursive. <laughs> we'll use, be using their fingerprints for their signature. My son doesn't yeah. even know how to sign his name um, anymore. Okay. So, Candace, did you have any more um, like concerns regarding the time frame? No, I mean, I guess if that's possible, it just seems short to me. Well, right. at least it's more than the state. Well, yeah, you, it's more than they. Referendum is, again, the rapid response and initiative is the slow response. Yeah, so if it's after 45 days, that's when you do an initiative and you have right. like the 180 days to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good point, Thanks. Well, I think what I'm sensing is that leaving it at 45 and not making it shorter. Yeah, I don't Agreed. think we'd want it shorter. Mm -hmm. I'd like 45. Yeah. Especially since it stays in effect anyway, so it's not like you have that. I think the purpose, from what I understood from Hillary's comments, like the 30-day limit is there because traditionally it takes 30 days for ordinance to go into effect, and the purpose is to hit it before it goes into effect. And we change the percentage to five. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's less. So I, I my notes were when it was ten. Okay. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> Uh, affidavit of circulator, so it tells them what how they need to put their petition together. So th there was just match Hillary's comment. Okay. Which is on the last page before. Well, it, yeah, it, it goes along. It's both. But yeah. So, so this is the same comment Adam made earlier, which is that if we're restating statute, what do we need to? And I mean, that's kind of a toss-up. No, you don't need to, but statute could change. I think in that case, yeah. if the statute changes, it, there's a reasonable reason for it, I would think. With the affidavit? Yeah. So I would leave the affidavit to the state. Well, we have, this one has two more. The F is six, and we yeah, I think eight. you just got clipped. Uh, you got to go to the. You got to the thing on the bottom. Should get paid on that. Yeah. yeah, there's a dot 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 one. Yeah, in the bottom of the comment. Yeah. Hillary, your notes are very long. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> they don't fit in the side <laughs> comment section. 
You can't put me in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone have any issues then to, like, I guess the question is do we want to keep it in here or? I like it's spelled out. Why not? I'd say pull it out, make it shorter. You want to pull it out? Yes. Anyone else? I, the only reason I would leave it is so that people know what yeah. they have to do. They don't have to dig what they have to do. It's yeah. not like one lady had to dig to what she had to do and kept messing it up. So leave it spelled <laughs> out. Make it but if they change it, then we don't get the then change. we're stuck with this. Unless, Without you know, there's a... I think there is some benefit to having, because you, this is a charter, and it's understood that you can have your own initiative and referendum process. There is some benefit in having it set forth in full. Whereas if you know if you leave a gap, then your interested citizen is then going to the CRS to try to figure out the affidavit of circulator. So, I mean, I, I can see it both ways, but I am sure. How realistically do you think it's going to change? Yeah, how long has this form of affidavit been in place? Well, and that's that's just it, though. You're arguing against yourself. I know. Okay. Oh, All right. That's <laughs> intentional. <laughs> so. Personally, I would like you to leave it in there because as a citizen who likes to get involved, I'd like it spelled out. <laughs> I think it should be spelled out. I agreed. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, really quick to go back, you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, 11.042, it just, I just noticed that it doesn't say that the clerk has to explain why if it's denied. Can we put that in there, that the clerk has to provide the reason? Yeah, we can specify that. Is that's that a good, yeah, no, I'm no. cool with that. I yeah. like that, actually. I thought, I was thinking about it in a different position. Place, but yeah, I agree. In the clerk's power section, I wonder. Like, yeah, possibly there, but yeah, at least yeah. here. Likely, yeah. if somebody's trying to recall something, they're not going to go read what the clerk does. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to pay attention to this portion. I promise I won't go back for at least five minutes. <laughs> time no, myself. We can go back. We're going to go back on this whole charter. Or something. I know. <laughs> um, so in 11042, we'd like to say that the clerk should provide feedback on how to correct the form of the affidavit. Yeah, and there's actually language in the statute that can, we can borrow um, that, because that is a requirement in the statute. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, um, then 1106, procedure after filing. Oh, hang on, sorry, I lied. I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, but... It's okay, I gave you permission. In 11058... Mm -hmm. I feel like it should say no monetary or non-monetary incentives. I think that's the that other thing. Value. value. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, no favors, no, you know, anything pretty much. Really good no concessions. Um, okay. Eleven oh six after filing. So that just says that Debbie has to fin or the town clerk has to certify it, make sure it's sufficient within 30 days, which yes meets that time because they have to verify thousands of signatures. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, 11:07. I couldn't think well, of any other options. Actually, on that one. 11:06. Yeah. 11:06. I mean. We're relying on the mail for a certificate. Should could there be an electronic way of sending that, or even like in person? I mean, is there a way to make that have more flexible, more options for? I like to be mail is guaranteed, so okay, you have to send it by mail. Something. But certified then mail. you can also send it other ways too. Indeed. But you are going to get a letter. Yeah. I think it should always have a letter, but you can also send it other ways. Could we put an electronically if applicable? Let's see. Um, get, you want it to go faster instead yeah. of mail. Yeah. Right? Like an email would be, I think, would be good, right? Yeah. We don't have well, a situation where the petition committee doesn't have email addresses, so they're actually submitting things in paper. That's the uh, mm. one applicable, though. They don't have email addresses. But yeah, because they're not required to for file that with the petition committee, right? Just an address. Yeah. Their names. Just because we're not saying it doesn't. I'm it's not limited. I don't feel right. like this is limiting language. I feel True. like this is what we are going to require. Correct. Maybe more general and say the town clerk shall promptly provide notice. 
mean I'm okay with that. Provide notice. Provide notice of the yeah. certificate of sufficiency. Well, I think we should keep copy by mail. Because what if they just like posted on the yeah. website and they're like, well, we, we provided notice. Sorry you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. so I think, yeah. it goes to spam. I think this doesn't. That's why I'm saying keep, yeah. keep the mail. This doesn't limit them from also doing right. it. From also sending the email. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you okay with that, Brian? Yeah, right. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, 11, oh, sorry, 11.07. Action by the town council. So for 11.07.3, it says that they can change the wording, but not the meaning. That just means that they can make it like legally applicable, but not like say, you know, change the entire intent of it. Right. Yeah. I, huh. Okay. On two, I feel like we should take everything after repeal the ordinance out because it could be subjective. No, it may not be the full ordinance that people are objecting to. Yeah, because if, if a referendum can target a part of an ordinance, right? So if the mm -hmm. referendum is targeting a very specific part of an ordinance, two you allows them to repeal thing. just yeah. that part of the ordinance. Because it's, it clarifies the part thereof is subject to the referendum petition. So yeah, only the part that the referendum petition specifically calls out. Okay. Can someone explain three to me though a little bit better? That's what I like. That's what I just mentioned. Is like they can change the wording to make it legally applicable to meet the referendums, um, the spirit of what they're trying. So to... yeah, I've had experience with this where the initiated measure is you know put together by a citizen. Um, most of recently, I dealt with one that was trying to enact a new nuisance ordinance for a town, and so the citizen had some really specific ideas, but the, the drafting was was just difficult. <laughs> so this language would have allowed the town to kind of um, reword, kind of true to the intent, but make it a little cleaner. Because remember, if it's approved, this is an ordinance the town has to enforce. <laughs> so it's, it's meant to allow some flexibility to clean up language. I feel like that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't think of an option for anyway. Because <laughs> without, I think the key part is without changing the meaning. Yeah, I think that's so. pretty protective. But again, that would be subjective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of it is, right? All of this. Um... That's what I struggle so much with. <laughs> I mean, would it be possible to submit it to like the town attorneys so that they can help with that? And well, they, they will for sure. But I mean. Usually this has gone through a town attorney when it was an ordinance. So like it's How did it get so confusing or so bad that a referendum was necessary in order this to change is the language? Rewording the referendum that was written no, by, this the is by the citizen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So this was rewording the uh, the the yeah. ordinance. Yeah, no, no. no, the petition. So, so the petition. a referendum. Yeah, a referendum can say I want to replace this part of the ordinance with this wording and the citizen wording can be massaged before... That's what I didn't get. Yes. Okay. This is pretty the human initiative. So referendums are just about what's been enacted by the town council. But an initiative is a whole, you know, drafted anew by a citizen of, I want this in the code. And that's what we're saying should be able to be... Tweaked. Revised, true to its intent. Right. Because if, if you want. The citizen who did it might not even be getting what they want. Right, like you know, their meeting it, may not even be clearly wording, conveyed. Right? Um. Okay, um, Adam, can I with that? Yeah, yes. Okay. I mean, and this goes both ways too, because if you have a mess of an ordinance on the ballot that hasn't been revised for clarity, I mean, you could argue that it's less likely to be approved, so maybe that, <laughs> maybe that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> or, may, or maybe not. So I think it's hard to anticipate how or if this would be a benefit. 
Yeah. And I think if we want to give voters the most power to know what they're voting on, we want that clearly worded for them to make a choice. Yeah. Right? I think the insurance company would have something to say on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this would be after it's already been voted on, right? No, no. Petition. Petition. It's petition proposed. When the petition has been. Oh, I'm been sorry. Okay. Approved. It's a petition. Yeah. By the clerk, and then it would be put on the ballot, but the wording can be changed. Right. It almost seems like the, it almost seems like the petitioner needs to have input. Intent to not. I expect they would this. in real life. Well, in yeah, but it's not. I mean, if you're spelling it out, if you're being real specific in some areas and not specific in another. So adding Explain. something about the petition committee. Pending petition committee's approval? With, yeah. With commission with petition committee's um, approval. I feel like I like just maybe we should like leave some things to our elected people. I feel like it's kind of been a pattern where we're like truly questioning the ethics and decisions of the town council. And you know, to me I feel like this should definitely be more of an empowering document than a limiting document. Overall, for our elected officials, you won't say the town attorney will be involved in this. Without doubt, I think I think we've got what we need to by saying without changing the meaning of the in uh -huh. initiated ordinance. I agree. Okay. What's interesting is that this, the town council can just adopt the ordinance as submitted. Like, so if someone gets a, uh, an initiative together and they say we want you to write this as an ordinance. The town council can just do it like that without yeah. even going to a vote. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's what you'd expect from, you know, if the town council is, you know, in tune with the voters and all yeah, of that. Yeah, so it doesn't have to go to a vote to... Well, most ordinances don't go to a vote, right? Not to a citizen vote. No, but if you, if you have an initiative petition, wouldn't that, if the town council doesn't adopt it, does it then go to a vote? It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that was my understanding. It has to be one of the three. Yeah. Yeah. There's options. Okay. Okay, so then results of an election, 1108. Any issues or changes for 1108? I think 1108.3 says six months. Do we want to do the day reference for that because to be consistent? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, the issue there is that... Well, before I jump in, let me make sure I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's a little harder to track here. Okay, so the six months, are you saying sub substitute that with 180 days? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have since in the section, I think it's Article 3, where we talk about um, vacancies for council. Mm -hmm. I did switch that. That had referred to 180 days, and... There was a comment about can it just be a, a date like May first, so I wasn't sure if you were talking about that 180 days because that is no longer in the draft. It could be, but it's not. I think we've got 180 days elsewhere as yeah, well, I right? The trouble with the date was that doesn't matter. I know we have something in our vacancy section about. Yeah, the vacancy stuff has 180 days. I'm not aware of what. What other references to 180 might be, but there might be. Yeah. I, I, so we, let's swap it for 100 to 180 days for now, and then if we decide something else later, we can change. Yeah, I just like having the day count because it talks about date for date of an election, and then yeah. months can have some issues there or confusion. Okay, um, anyone else for 1108? Anything there? Okay, 1109, Town Council Referral. So that means, that just means Council can refer any question to the voters without a associated petition. Yeah, do that either. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you guys are the ones who put a lot of stuff on the that's how we got here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Eleven ten. You can't withdraw a petition once it's been certified. Okay. Um, so the exception section. 
why were the exceptions to the initiative taken out completely? Because you moved the, um, init- mm-hmm. the exceptions for the referendum up into the referendum section, but not. Yeah. yeah. Well, so if you'll recall, one of the one of the rationale for being comfortable with limiting referendum is that you you're not limiting initiative. So if if you are carving out those referendum types, the, the ordinances that are not subject to referendum, it doesn't seem fair, I guess, in the grand sense, to also say they're off limits by initiative. Um, so that's just kind of my thinking is. OK, so uh, this you, this protects the citizens' ability to at least have an initiative on anything, even if a referendum is not possible on them. Correct. So that should have addressed some of your concerns, Candace, around carving out exceptions to referendum? Yeah. Okay. Anyone feel strongly the other way? They want Anyone want those exceptions for initiative in there? Could there be an initiative for a budget? Yeah, but then it would have to go to the whole town. But that's proactive and not reactive, so. Yeah, okay. So then the whole town, 50 per, you'd have to get 50% of the town to vote for it yeah. after that. Okay. So. Okay, um, then recall. Uh, here's another 180 days. <laughs> should try to make there this. <laughs> and yes, I would eliminate, by the way, 204. Yeah, I looked at 204. Agree to that, I thought. Anyone else? Like that one is just pretty much the same wording. It's just in at the end of that section two that says elected officials are subject to recall. Yeah, I would. It didn't have any of the details. I didn't. Yeah, it just says that it's possible. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I think we're okay with removing 204. Um, okay. And we've already talked, I know that that is, that you're not proposing to have a recall petition prepared by the town clerk, so we're good. Yep, correct. Correct. Out of curiosity, why do you have to have 180 days pass, like within the term? Can can you say that again? Yeah, I was just curious why you have to wait the six month period of the beginning of the term before you can start a recall. I was just wondering. I think the idea is to honor the election. So if if you start to recall after immediately after an election ends, you're sort of invalidating the whole election process that just the place. So you're kind of letting it have a chance to be legitimate, I guess. Yeah, if you wait six months, there's at least a chance there's a legitimate reason that happened while they were elected. And not just because you're Seth or like (laughs) not just sour. I was just curious. This goes back to our no sour grapes provision. (laughs) All right. So are we ready to move on? Yeah. So I had a question for I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say for three, why is there a word limit? Or and why is it Um, because it has to be printed on the ballot. Okay. And two hundred words is the limit for a ballot? No, it just gets long and expensive and no one reads it. (laughs) Kind of an accepted link. So, like, this means that when you have a recall petition, the form of the recall petition has to be printed on the ballot as a question? Because I don't, like, I guess this one just says includes a statement of which the recall is sought. It doesn't actually... Yeah. So, yeah, the basis for the recall is... It's on the petition, it's, and I, I think I misspoke. I don't think it's on the ballot, but it's on the petition. So if you're circulating a petition for signatures and you have a basis for recall that's you know, multiple pages, I guess the idea is that people aren't going to read it. Yeah, how, as you're walking around getting signatures, right. did they all read the you know, the four pages that you wrote about why this person should be? Well, you have signature pages, right? So your pockets are right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. But why do we not have a form for a recall? Like a standardized form? Yeah, well, yeah, well Hillary's comment here on the right of 11.12.2 says, will the clerk be required to have a form right. for a recall? And she, she says, no, it says all that needs to happen is you have to name not less than three and not more than five 
electors who shall represent the recall effort, and they have to have a mailing address. Plus the affidavit spelled out in a previous section, right? Because that's this is still a petition under that form. So the affidavit defined in 1108 or 11. Are you are you saying like have the shell of it where people can type in their yeah. names, their addresses? Yeah, I mean we're going to do that for we have that for initiative and referendum, right? No, so we there's don't do that. we don't. No, no. Because when we had talked this with Debbie, the she was worried that those that would make it untenable to maintain because there's so many different forms of petitions that are possible. But if, but if we had just an outline where people would type in their 200, I mean, it would be ridiculous for her to have their reasons, right? But if they had just like a template where they could type in. Well, okay. I imagine you could probably go online and find So why would, what, what's the need for that? If they're putting together this petition, I'd feel like they'd be at least competent enough to organize that into a document. Okay, but okay, so in 11.042, we talk about the form of the petition you know, it needs to be submitted to the clerk and they have to approve or reject it. Now, that doesn't mean the clerk has to have the form, Correct. but the clerk will have to look it over and make sure that there's you know, certain things. That and we're adding the wording that they have to provide feedback on how to make it sufficient. Right. Just to, you know. So are we saying there's no form necessary to be approved by the clerk in a recall? No, what we're saying is they write their own form. Okay. So, so eleven eleven two, the recall petition must be presented to the clerk for review. So that's the clerk's opportunity to review it and ensure that it has all the parts and pieces it needs to have. Okay. So I link your comment to the clerk is required to have a form to meaning. I guess what I was asking is why would we not want the clerk to review the form because it, no, 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 they do review. But we, they do. That's that's right. I was, yeah, they do I was, have to review. They just don't have a, They don't have a, a template that they provide. Uh, Right. Yeah. Done a piece of paper that here use this form. Yeah. For I mean, they certainly right. we could we could require that, and it would make it a little bit more uniform and easier. They're for just going on the secretary of state's website. But yeah, I was gonna say I don't think it's super complicated to find. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. She, she just she just did. <laughs> so. You can easily find things like that online. Petition yeah. form. I did. That's actually what I googled. <laughs> <laughs> make note of that, listeners. And it's for going to your local PTA for no. <laughs> So, yeah, I think we were talking about the word limit of 200 for the grounds of recall, but good to keep it. 200. It's, <coughs> it's like a paragraph. <laughs> okay. Um, continue on then. In four, I, I may have just answered my own question in my head. So petition has a lot more signatures than recall, correct? Petition. Which petition? You're skipping to five already, Bob? Four. four. I had a question on four, which is why five days for a petition and three days for a recall. And I think I answered it. If there's more signatures in a petition, then the clerk would need more time to verify them. We give the clerk 30 days for... Referring. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, it, no recall this is be... talking about approving the form the prior to being oh, so presented the form, so, for so signatures. My, so my question stands then. Why five for petition and three for recall? So the reference and initiative forms are more complicated. There, there's more to confirm. I'm sorry, which is more complicated? The petition for a referendum or initiative. Oh, okay, cool. All so right, it gives so that answers the question. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. And we've already confirmed that there's, as long as like town clerk will give feedback and there's time to correct the form of the petition. Because yeah, the four says they'll mail the notice of their action. Oh yeah. Never mind. Sorry. Um, okay. Moving on then. And five. We already talked about non-erasable ink, so we can. Yeah. But then yeah, the percentage twenty-five. For a recall, is there a st state statute we can lean on here? So I th think if I read this correctly, the state statute says of like of the number of votes for that seat. This says eligible voters, eligible voters which is hugely different in this town. Yes. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we want to change or look at. Okay. I like making it dependent on the number of votes they got. 
I believe that's how the state statute is. So that's just, yeah, I'm talking. Is that how it is in state statute? Twenty five percent of the total votes cast at the last preceding general election for that office. So it'd be specific for that seat. Okay. Which gets a little yeah, more complicated. This would be a higher threshold. What did you say? This would be a this higher would be a higher threshold. Yeah, yeah I think as it should, should be, but I, I think it makes sense to be the people who cast votes for that office, which would also get us around districts versus at large. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. So we want to make it 25% of the votes cast for that office. In the last election. Okay. And it's eligible electors of that seat too. So if there's a district, it's... Yeah, the way it's written, it'll district. already be just people who could have voted for that seat. Right, it's already, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Because they did. <laughs> huh? Because they did. Yeah. So we're still good with changing it to mm -hmm. be in line with state statute? I think that's wait, a very wait. good catch. Wait, wait. What if it gets redistricted? It's still the, the number of votes that that person got. I think it's still set. That vote is also the number of votes for that three years, just yeah, three years into their term. Mm -hmm. And it's been redistricted. It goes all the way back to three years ago. The number of votes that were cast for that person's seat. No. Yeah, it's the votes of the preceding election that kind of get locked in. Yeah. But, so if they're elected in 2023, yeah. your vote to recall them in 2026, you're still looking at 2023 numbers. Well, is that true? Or say in 2025, there was, say we have two people in each district. It would be the last district, the last election in that district. No, it no, would be the one be that the that person. Got them there. That's, yeah. Well, that's it's not, not what, it's that's not set. the words we it's use. Yeah. No. Right, but it gets complicated. It gets complicated. There's redistricting. Here. I, and the town would have grown. Generally, if you're redistricting, you're rebalancing, so you expect the numbers to the be numbers fairly. To be, and if you're redistricting, it's because things have grown. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Things could have shifted, but. That's true. But either way, I'm. I think the last election rather than the election they were elected at, but I'm okay either how way. How is the state statute worded, if that's how they do it? It's fine. It says, the signature threshold to place a recall question on the ballot for a state or county elected official is 25% of the total votes cast at the last preceding general election for that office. Yeah. Oh. And, but that office, I mean... Well, if it's a council member seat, then it's the is, you know, votes for the other council. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. But I think that keeps you away from the risk of redistricting changing too much of the electorate that's going to be that makes a recall. Be involved in the recall. So what we're but saying it doesn't completely it. eliminate it. No, so with the devil's advocate, someone was in this district, the district now instead of here is here, and the new people don't want him or her. But I don't know. Hmm. And so they want to throw them out because... I think the redistricting problem is probably going to be pretty unique and not yes. very frequent. And I think recalls will probably be... I mean, we've not had a recall. We've had. There, not since I've been here, but there have there has been. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't redistrict more than every 10 years anyway, so... Um, well, that's the automatic no. one. We, you can redistrict if it's the imbalance exists. Yeah, but that has to be based on the census, which is every 10 years. No, we, okay, because we said in one of the meetings that we would use annual numbers. Because, yeah, the town numbers. gets some annual number of projected growth, and if there was more than, like, a 10% disparity between districts. Yeah, because we have a unique thing in here. I mean, we're going to be growing in Colorado. Really, we're going to be growing so fast, we're going to have to redistrict more than every 10 years. It's just going to have to be well, a thing if that we go with this. You have to be constitutionally valid, so we, we we'll need to revisit that. And the only basis, the only recognized basis for redistricting by population is by U.S. Census, which is a pretty rigorous count. It's not a projection. It's not a you know density estimate. So we'll have to talk about that. Back to Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> would it? I, I guess you said automatic. Would there? Would the Town council be able to order a redistricting by ordinance if they're 
like understanding of numbers has shifted since the last census? It shouldn't. I mean, I think that's why you tie it to the census. So we have we have to change the house. Automatic redistricting that's invalid. That's what it sounds like. like. Yeah. Well, I'm not aware of automatic redistricting, and that's not anything I've drafted. Uh, but something no. about keeping, I'll find it. Yeah. I thought that was maybe something that Malcolm told us that he got from Kendra. Yeah. From, or from yeah. Louisville, too. No, I, Kendra and I are absolutely on the same page on redistricting. <laughs> She's kind of one of the leaders in the state on how to do this right. So, I. I we, I'm sorry, I'm just sort of at a loss. We we can revisit it, but um, yeah, can you find out if section, so. three point two um, two three point two two? But that's in a census, so I think be good to know. Yeah, can can you find out from us if there's any other valid way of triggering a redistricting? There's not. I can tell you right now. Okay, there's not. <laughs> Unless you want to try to be the, you know, the trailblazer and, and fight, fight the There's fight. There's other charters that do it. There are what? There's other charters that try to do it. Yeah, there. Yeah. Off the top of my head. But, yeah, I thought I saw it elsewhere as well. I can bring my spreadsheet. Because so. there was some that said, yeah, ordinance, it can be, redistrict can be triggered by ordinance from the council. But that could be tricky because they're, would they be redistricting for themselves? No, yeah, I think no, it's triggered by triggered. ordinance, but ordinance has to be supported by census numbers and other things. Mm -hmm. They don't get to do it because they want to. They have to meet the constitutional mm -hmm. basis for the district. Okay. Then, yeah, we probably need to revisit that because... Yeah, we do. Because in 10 years, <laughs> in two years, you had 3,000 people. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's huge. huge. It is. Yeah, Brian, as I think you talked about when something a new development opens up yeah it could throw a we lot have, of things we, we had the 2020 map and then we were given 2022 numbers and there was a thousand for springfield those are estimates though. yeah well but still but yeah, that's houses, enough right I mean, they're approved number of houses so it's yeah. a lot it's a lot mm -hmm. and i i know where i live i mean it's finally ending the neighborhood flat air meadows but I could walk to 20 new houses going up at any given day for the last five years, hmm. seven years. Well, maybe that's an argument against having districts if, you, if your population growth is... Yeah, yeah. there really is. Yeah. Well, let's table that for now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's assume we don't have districts. And how are we at 25% of the votes cast in the last preceding election. Yeah, we might want to leave that open. Well, it's the same thing, though. They could still be valid. It's the same thing, because yeah. if you're moving yeah. somebody who was elected four years ago, you have had an election two years. So yes. so are we changing? Those are still staggered terms. Yeah, I got, yeah. I so do we want to change it to match the state statute, I guess, is the, I think is the so. question? In my mind, well, that is the last election. Says. Yeah, so the only thing that would change is right, like 11125 says 25% of number of eligible electors <laughs> of the town, <laughs> period. <laughs> this one says eligible that's, electors of the town, period. And I think that's Whereas, way too big. Yeah, yeah. So we want to add in the limiting factor of for that office in question. For that office. And yeah. I think yeah. it's in the last election for that office. And it's not elected, it's both. Votes cast. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Be clear, the statute doesn't apply now. It, that, that statute is written for county and state offices. So, um, I mean, it's certainly a useful guide, but I just want to be clear that that's not what you're under now. Right. But I think it makes sense. I think it makes, yeah, I think I agree that it makes sense to kind of have it limited to the office of the person being recalled in question, the number of electors for that. Right. So is electors votes cast? Votes cast. Votes cast. Votes cast. Votes cast. cast. Right. Votes cast for the office of the person in question. That's right. <coughs> yes. But not yeah. Okay. At the last preceding regular election. Okay. Um, number six. So that is applying only to recall and not to initiative or referendum, I believe. 
No, well, so they can't have signatures on initiative and referendum petitions until the clerk approves the best Right. Right, but this one oh, says you that, recall? this one says a recall has to, like the person has to gather all the signatures within thirty days of, right, initiating the, the form of the petition. Right. Mm -hmm. So. That just means I guess that's just meant to put a time limit on it, so it's not like hanging over the elected official's head for the rest of their term. Mm -hmm. And for. Petition, I'm sorry. Yeah, for. Anyway, I'm getting them mixed up. In Referendum my head. is 45 days. Well, no, that's, that's but it's 45 right. days from approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was 45 days from uh, from ordinance being adopted. Right. So yeah. you have yeah some yeah. amount of so time to get the form approved anyway. and some amount of time to get yes. the signatures. All right. If we're okay with it being different, that's fine with me. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're at least aware. Yeah. <laughs> so 30 days. Look how freezes over. <laughs> Beautiful voice. Oh, you guys great. do not want me to be a trustee. <laughs> uh, number seven. That seems pretty, that's the same for the other petition stuff. Do we need to add the piece about the deficiencies? Yes, that's a good uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we'd like to add the in eleven twelve seven that the clerk should provide feedback as to the deficiencies in the form of the petition. This is the signed yeah. one. This is after the fact, so I don't know if there's a signature. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. This would be telling them which signatures were invalidated or things like that. Yeah, good point. So that would go somewhere else, probably. That's yeah, that goes in the general form of petition section. Either that or in four. In four, yeah. Yeah, that's where. That's where. So that should cover. No, I'm this sorry. List. In recall eleven twelve four. It could go. No, because eleven oh four applies to that as well. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So well, I I agree. I think that makes more sense. Have it in one place. Okay. Um, then the written protests. So uh, does that mean like someone can protest a recall? Like say you shouldn't be trying to recall this person? It's contesting the sufficiency of the recall petition. So it might be alleging that some signatures are invalid or that the circulator did things wrong. Okay. I have proof of them getting serious, giving people money. Yeah. Okay. Um, nine. Okay. Ten. I said one quick question on ten. Yes. What if the person is on the ballot? I'm looking at the last part of ten. If they're on the ballot, does it make sense to have a recall election at the same time they're being voted in for their next term? I thought they had to be within six have more than six months left of their term. No, it was more than six months after. Right, I thought it was both. Or that's what the state is. Is it? I think so. No, this is talking about there's six months left in that's odd if I read it. Let me reread it. So basically it gives them a time frame saying within Oh wait, well wait a second. Even though combined. the election is not the one in which the office held by the person would otherwise be filled. Okay, maybe that covers what I was worried about. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's combining the recall election with the general yeah. election if it's in within 180 days. Yeah, I just didn't want to... <laughs> so it's like kind of... Or, or yeah. loophole, but, uh, Valid, yeah. 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 That makes but sense. I think that I think that phrase maybe handles it. It would otherwise be filled, Okay. So not more oh, that, than 90 that, days it. unless it's within 180 days of a regular right. election. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, then 11, number 11 there. So Wait. again, this is one, do we want to strike it? Because restating what's in the state or, or leave it just so we'll always have it? Leave I would it. like to leave it, yeah. That's fine. 
Uh, that's in the same wording as the 25%. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we'd probably want to repeat the wording from the uh, eleven twelve five for 25 or 50% of votes cast for that office in the last preceding election. Oh, yeah. Okay. So <coughs> keeping that same language, but keeping it. I mean, we're changing the language to match the other, but keeping the fifty percent. Yeah. yeah. Yes. On for and the that end. makes sense for that scenario. Yeah. Good. Please talk. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to like repeat offenders. On eleven, you can't be like you attempt to recall because they do something bad and it doesn't go through, and then they do something really, really bad, and you're like, oh, man, I already tried to recall once this Didn't term. Did you try that with the president last time? Well, you I could. mean... <laughs> case in point. Well, you still have the 50%, so if they keep yeah. doing bad things... Then... And surely you get 50%. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. That closes out 11. And Hillary, thank you very much for having a lot of this work done before we met. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, I think we also had a, on the agenda, we had some of the leftover go-backs from last week. Well, we had four and five, I thought. Yes, mm -hmm. four and five. Um, so let's see. So four and five. So going back to section four, emergency powers, or sorry, emergency powers in town offices. So our first thing was, do we want to move that first section to the mayor? I think it made sense. Giving the general mayor duties to Article three. Right. I agree. Yeah. I have a good that. Um, and then I guess as we're going through four oh the new four oh one. Does anyone have anything that jumps out at them for revisit? Um are we four oh one three? The um Line of succession. Yeah, that's gonna. So this one, this one's interesting in the sense that I was thinking, worst case scenario, mm -hmm. you could easily go through and get down to the man, the the municipal judge and the municipal prosecutor if things. Some some. Act of terrorism in the board of trustee room or something like that. Yeah, yes. you mean yeah, you you drop down to the municipal judge quick. So you're you're these are two individuals who are contracted positions who are not town residents. Appointed? Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. And who may not live in the town. Probably don't. And Probably don't, yeah. may if if no. things really go sideways, may decide that they have their own personal interests that they're going to deal with and not want to deal with the town. Does the town manager have to live in the town? No. No. Yeah. But so the town manager attends a board meeting. Yeah. So does the town clerk. Yeah, okay. So does the town attorney. Right. I think But Bob's point right. is that we already have someone in the line of secession who doesn't live in the town. And they're pretty high up. Right. Is that your concern that they don't live in the town? Well, they don't live in the town. They may not have necessarily the town's interests first and foremost. Right, I mean, I guess you could say that about anybody. Well, because why would of, they then be a judge or a prosecutor in town of Erie if they don't have their town's best interest at heart? Well, I think well, the, the question is like one of our, we, I think we might get into like a circular thing here because one of the eligibilities to be mayor is that you have to live in the town. And so how do we reconcile that with the line of succession, including people who won't live in the town? That's what I would ask. Do you have a idea of who could take those spots? Well, so I, could, I was I was thinking, like, so I, I looked it up, and, and I was trying to, did this ever really happen? And I couldn't find an example of this ever happening. 
Except. Oh God. Uh-huh. Except. Yeah, she said it happened. Except it happened in March of 2022. It's a different situation. The entire town council of Florence resigned in a 24-hour period. That left the mayor. And it did not leave the manager because the the, the issue was um, surrounding corruption. And so you basically were left with the mayor and you were left with the town attorney. And that's it. And they did have an election for about six months. Wow. So though it's not necessarily an emergency situation, it almost deals with a similar situation that the town... So... <laughs> What do you propose? <laughs> well, <laughs> so I was thinking about, like, what could you do in this situation? Um, one, and I'm just going to, I have a tendency to just throw stuff out in there. So one would be move planning into the seats of council as to deal with the issues that need to be deal with and dealt with until a, an election can be held. Why is planning any better? I mean, I'm just they saying, don't live in the town either. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to say the judges... No, the planning commission. Yeah, the planning commission. commission does. Oh, the planning commission. Okay, I thought you were talking about... They're, they're appointed, right? By they're the appointed. Council? Okay. Or you could, you could, by seniority, rank all of the members of all the boards and commissions and select the top seven to temporarily serve in this position. Temporarily, I think that's a key piece. Exactly, I'm not saying. <laughs> or you could have each board and commission select a member to represent the temporary council. That could change though, as the council changes what boards and commissions there are, right? Well, hopefully it's very small period of time that you would have to have a group of... We have uh, something written in where we have is it three? Did we say three people? If there's three vacancies, yeah, it triggers an election. Yeah. Yes. So in the event that that happens, they're or something terrible months. happens, they're gonna have a lot of vacancies. We would have it, but we would have an election before six months. Unless right? we have to, unless there's a redistricting issue, and then you have to go to 180 days, don't you? I think the other one would try. I feel like that would be a very. I'm just saying, like, if you, if, if people like wanted, that, that if people had malicious intent, that would be the last thing they, on my mind. Yeah. I mean, that would be some pretty, like, intense, well, like, Swiss cheese situation, you know. Yeah. For... Well, we're talking about that here, too, if you're even going to detail it in the charter. I would almost rather go through town staff to maintain operations of the town because they're already the ones doing it. And that's what was my question with town clerk if added as a council appointment. Why not just yeah. not, it doesn't matter if that is council or not. Just is there the some legal reason, Hillary, that like a town clerk, like a, a town manager hired position can't be in the official line of succession? No, it, it's purely a limitation of how officers are being defined. So okay. you, you certainly could make the clerk. I, 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 right. I might but, if, but if you look above, uh, look for one for town officers means... Right. Individuals appointed to the position identified in Article 4. I have an even bigger so, rat hole. Wouldn't Melissa, as deputy, you know, town manager or whatever, town administrator, wouldn't she then essentially then take the Malcolm's place? Mm -hmm. So heaven forbid something happened and Malcolm got taken out, wouldn't Melissa then be the next person in line in theory? Well, I was going to say to your point, the way we handle it internally is um, it goes... Malcolm, me, chief, and then it goes to like public works and parks. So it goes to like the, our major operational directors who would have the knowledge and capacity to run the whole town based on there. So that's kind of how we handle it internally, if that's helpful. Like when Malcolm's out, um, I take over his duties. Like he's on vacation now. So that's, I don't know if that helps you, but that's our line yeah. of succession. And I just mentioned that it's us and then immediately it's chief. For that kind of emergency. So, then you would have the whole police. You were going to say something. That's what I was going to say is really this line of mm -hmm. exactly what she was saying is that it should go through the town staff. Because I remember we had this discussion about Malcolm's line of succession and how he maintains his own. Mm -hmm. does. And, and that, that's, that's what, what he it does. Is. And this actually happened during the Marshall Fire. So during the Marshall Fire, he lost his home and I immediately took over Erie with Chief. And then we, uh, we like, um, manage the response 
for Erie supporting Louisville. So it happened pretty recently, but we're pretty clear on it, and that's why we sort of like to have the folks who know how to take over in a, a disaster situation like that. Um, I think so, one of the discussions we'd had at the time was whether we wanted to codify the town administrator's line of succession. And I can't remember what we decided. Oh, well, we decided that he must present one every yes. year. Yeah. Okay. So I think that, I think if we just reference that here and saying, so you go down the town officers and then the town so administrator's line of succession. Town, oh. But then do we include all of the um, officers to include the judge and prosecutor who, to Brian's point, don't live here in her part-time because, yeah, I think at that point, if you've lost that many people, we've hit the automatic election provision. Right, where but we, in the meantime, somebody's got to make deci like yes, urgent exactly. decisions. not Because, like, if you've lost more than three of your council members, you're supposed to immediately trigger a special election. Right. So if we're all the way down digging into town staff to run the town now, that means we're having a special election immediately, right? They're going to love doing that. Because <laughs> <laughs> the... Boardroom has been blown up. <laughs> <laughs> if we if we plan for it, it won't come. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Melissa has to attend all meetings from her room. room. <laughs> I do live here in, in a bunker <laughs> somewhere. And you're never allowed Somebody to quit. Yeah. Right now, making plans okay. for a hundred years. So I think per this question, then um, we want to maintain the list of town officers as we had. We're keeping the town clerk separate from that. And then we would want to reference the administrators. the administrator's town of success or line of succession as the the continuation yes. after the town officers. Yeah. And that would I'm assuming that handles the town clerk in that yeah. list He's somewhere. Oh, with the town she, clerk in ter in terms of our, our succession of yeah. operation. She's I would say it's it really the way we've set it up. It's mostly people who have large operational oversight. So it's okay. like a police, public works, and parks and rec. Okay. Purely for, you know, if there's an emergency shelter, we would maybe use ECC, public works. We'll do so. That's kind of how we have it. The major operational. Okay. So they, plus they manage large fields of people yeah. and have yeah. management experience. So I'm not sure though that that is the solution that you were looking for. Well, or I at least want to voice that it was something I thought about that it, it's, I'd, I'd rather have it go to a full time, I'd rather have it go to the residents, but I'd also rather have it go to full time staff than a contracted position. So the, it's the judge and the prosecutor that are in the, the, in the uh, interior. Uh, so are we wanting to add the town manager's line of succession that, that is established, you know, by the town manager right after town manager here? Yes. So is that what we're talking about? Yes, yeah. I Do think so. And then how do you run the town? But a separate thought is what if what if council all resigns and just walks out? Then we're SOL without a, a paddle. Well, but we we have a we have a oh, special sure. election we'll triggered involved. quickly, and then the town manager or his line of succession in this case would take over until that uh, no new ordinance would be passed. Yeah, the, the, the town can still function. We can Without, still, we can still order your streets, get you water. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it just yes. there's going to be no ordinances. Mm -hmm. There's going to be no land development. There's going to be those things, but day to day operations would still go on. Yeah, I, I think there's merit in that idea that you you run down to town manager and then you. Down his line of succession. You run down his line of succession. Yeah. You don't add the attorney, the judge, prosecutor in, in, in there. Unless they become full time staff. Which means you could probably strike. Well, then they four. would go into his line of succession right. again. I mean, the main reason four yeah. is in there is yeah. because of five. Right? Is that is town officers used anywhere else? I don't think so. Yeah. I'd have to check, but pretty sure we <laughs> For and this purpose, it might be in the section where we define like the uh, the Article appointed four. positions. I think that might be the only other place, and that was there. I, I check that kind of internal consistency as as I go. So if if we end up deleting that term, I'll I'll make sure it doesn't appear elsewhere. Okay, so 
are people okay with that then as you so, go yeah. to the town manager and then through his or her line of succession? Yes. And then just cut it off there? So like judge and attorney or not? I think there. it makes the most sense. So we would... It's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, it, make, it makes the most um, realistic sense here. I know the attorney is involved in a whole lot of stuff, uh, but the town manager's line of succession is a lot more familiar with operations. Yeah. And the point at that level would be to continue operation of the town until an election can be held. Right. So so we can strike four. Right. So it's on four and just change five to add that other stuff in. And you mean four one town three? Officers. And then I have to check on town officers before we delete that, but yeah. if we need it, I'll get rid of it. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then so yeah, we'll line of succession goes right. town manager and then off to the manager's succession. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually we could probably combine three and five. Maybe. Is there a reason we split those into two separate? To define the town officers in between. In the middle, yeah, but yeah. since we're taking that out. Yeah. Um, you just put the list at the end of three. Yeah. I think Hillary can fix that when she cleans it up, but yeah. she's going to have a lot she's going to need to do, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Anything else then with the new 401? Four oh two. Hillary's comment about shall be appointed but to the position by a majority of the town council is how that's done. Yeah. Which is effectively hiring, but that's the town, that's the process to, to bring in a manager. We're sticking with town clerk being hired, right? Yes. But this, this 402 is specifically about the town manager. So the town manager shall. So you want to oh. change that wording to be appointed by a majority vote so that it's kind of oh. like, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was not even, I said gotcha. Yeah, no, Hillary, <laughs> Hillary has, a, has a comment in here. Right. Yeah. Because it, it does warrant cleaning up how the town should hire a town manager. Right. So by saying it's an appointed by a majority vote of the council, it gives you that it's not just like the mayor saying, I'm going to go off and hire someone. Right. You, yeah. Exactly. For comment three, I thought we ended up deciding it was in Lewis's, Louisville's ordinances and not in their charter. Comment three is about the previous. Oh, so it doesn't matter anyway. So, all right. Sorry. So, yeah, 402 was inserted from... What are CPN provisions? It was Castle Pike. Yes, Castle Pike. No. With modification to 2E. I'm not going to. Ah, here was the section about line of succession. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyone objecting to changing the process for hiring the town manager to appointed by majority vote of the council? I agree with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the following question about present or total? Total. So majority, so you'd need a minimum of four regardless. I said make it consistent with 5025, but that's a four reference. What did we that? That was... Majority vote of the council in office, which is no, total. Removing a member from the board of commission. No. Yeah. Yeah, just, just make those two consistent. Shall require a majority vote of the council. Right. Makes sense. So yeah, both of them still don't That's say. That's the higher bar, it's definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, So yeah, Hillary for 402, we wanted to do the appointed by majority of the council in office. Majority vote of the council in office. Okay, um, and we're 
just going to leave town clerk? I mean, mm -hmm. that's just the next comment is why I jumped there. Um, did we go over 402.1, removing? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe that was your comment about being 502. It was, actually. Re removing with needing effectively five, so two-thirds. Right. So, so higher, two -thirds higher for with a majority present, so in this case it would be four, and then firing with two-thirds. And no fewer than five. Not present. Yeah, so it would be five sort of thing. Yeah. That would look Adam, do you look consternated? Yeah. No, right now. Uh, or should we remove with majority vote? Well, so I like Hillary's comment that says a majority of those in office, yeah. but to make that a two thirds vote. I'm okay either way. I just want to make them get the same. There was a reason we made it a two thirds vote on removing a board member, um, advisory board. an advisory board member, right? Because we didn't want politics at play. Yeah. There's. And I guess a similar concern would be around the town manager. It's right? absolutely going to be the, yeah. the same so, thing. So having the higher bar matched to the board or commission removal um, makes sense from our previous reasoning. Yeah, I mean, if that's our. Anyone? The rationale we're using. Then, uh, I think it should match. Yeah. yeah I think removal in general should be two yeah. thirds of the those in office. Okay. So in four hundred two one, we want to do we want to match the wording for removal of the boards and commissions that we had set up on five hundred two five. So then, does that get, is that going to yes. apply to all the other um, the attorney the the prosecutor, the municipal judge. I mean, if, if we're going to make it that way, are we making it across the board? Can we think of situations where we want it? Where to is that? Are the removal set up in the in that other section? It doesn't say anything about removal for those positions. I mean, they 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 have a so they have, a, they have a, or appointed. They have a okay. never ending right. contract. They're different than this position. It, is it, I'd be interested to know Malcolm's view on having essentially a no confidence vote, but still being employed. So, I mean, it, it would be an odd situation to know that more than half your bosses or half your bosses wanted you gone, but couldn't remove you. Right, because that's the other way to indicate no confidence yeah. by a majority. Hmm. I mean, I think it's okay that they're different. For the attorney and judge? For the town manager and commission <laughs> members. They're completely different jobs. It's a different relationship. Yeah. It's a much different relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, advisory board members are, they're appointed and you don't want to get, you don't want the board of trustees getting too deep into what is going on in there and trying to solve political strife there. But the relationship between the town manager and the council is very close. Yeah. And if a majority are not happy, then the majority should be able to remove them. That's what happened when I started. And, and what was the it vote for removal? What's that? What was the vote for removal? It was, it was four, to, four to two. And four to the three. No, it was five to five two. two. It was five to two. So it was... So it was... I it did that, meet the higher bar. I guess it would have meet the higher bar. Um, but did, so, but if we had, if it had been four to three, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't. I, I. It wouldn't have been because it's not a two thirds vote. And there would have been if it, if it was required to meet that. If it hadn't met that bar, there could have been some real um, stressful interactions for the duration of the town manager's employment. More sour grapes. Real, you, you, it's hard. The, the town manager has the, the ability to affect what's going on on the board a whole lot more than an advisory yes, person. And so that's why having giving the majority the ability to make a make a decision there at least moves it moves the strife on. You can make it you can make a, a change. Fair point. 
Um, and you, you're going to have two camps when something like this is happening. Um, so do you so how bad do you want that relationship to get? Yeah, you're, you've convinced me. Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. So simple majority. I, I'm trying to find a, a way to, to put to verbalize kind of what we went through. And so, yeah, is it those present though, or those? So if one doesn't show up, doesn't make the meeting. It should be an office. I think it should be office. If we're going yes. with majority, then we should stick with. I agree with that agree. because there will be people who just don't show up because of the vote. Yes, sure. Yeah. So we want to keep it then simple majority of the council in office. You convince me. Anyone else want to provide feedback or thoughts? I think that's fine. Had the council tried to remove a board member, or uh, advisory board member? <laughs> well, no, we Brian, Brian had one. Yeah, I no, had to have that was like the recommendation of the advisory board, right? <coughs> it wasn't because... It wasn't even the whole board. I, I, Because it was about attendance, oh, no. and then it was not communication, well, and then it was like... There was an episode where a board was <coughs> dissolved, not dissolved, the board still existed, but all the members were removed. It was mm -hmm. 2016 or 17. Oh. I'm not sure it was done like that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I think it was done more administratively, but... Yeah. Okay, um, the town manager position, I guess, do you want to, for 4022, I think that's it for the town manager. Anyone have anything, any comments or issues here? So yeah, the comment on G, we're going to keep clerk up hired. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Before we get into town attorney and onward, since we are at 8.30, let's take a break um, and try to finish things. Because we've got still got five to go through, which is another relatively short, but we've got a few more. I mean, if anyone needs a break, can we? I took one. Sarah, yeah, Sarah. <laughs> <might need that. laughs> Sarah might be there. I think it's going to be a short break. Is good. Okay, um, so we'll take a five minute break. I'll try to do it quickly and get done quick. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Gabby's sake, if you grab a, grab a noisy bag, open it up, put it out, please. <laughs> 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 no, you're good. Nice change of pace. It's not like a number one. My wife is no longer cheese. She says, just get home when you get home. <laughs> After the experience. Am I have to talk to my friend? Huh? Yes. I'm going to go check on my phone. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five minutes. 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 Five I'll be like best. I can. Excuse me, just stop this. I went straight for the the crunch and the dry chips. Or yeah, I don't like this. You don't? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favorite. Sorry, I get myself okay. sick on so, bugles when I was pregnant one time. What though? One time, when I was pregnant with one of my kids, and I ate so many bugles, like I was sick the next day. Oh my goodness. But that was like 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. There you go. Someone's going to have to struggle. Right. 
The other seem really trying to let me have it. You can have that big one. <laughs> Well, now they got us here until 10 because we got snacks. <laughs> it shouldn't be not that long, hopefully. Five is short. What now? Section five is short. Yeah. I just can't believe I was so sold on the district. If we can only use the district every 10 years, it really doesn't make sense right now. Is it? No talking business. Okay. We're still being recorded, right? Yeah, we are, yeah. Oh. I don't know. Are we being broadcast? Recorded, but not broadcast. Yeah, they don't stop it. No, I don't right. think they stop it. No, so all your private make... conversations. Not right. 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 In this now part. the town knows. Now I they like know you chips. like ride chips. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to use it against you. Yeah, well, I eat the chips to crinkle through the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gabby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although the crunching is probably not much better. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been in a meeting where someone tried to do it really slowly and it's like worse? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What are you doing? Just serve oh, gummy bears. <laughs> Rip the band aid off. I think half the reason I'm having a snack is, you know, my. Stomach's about to demonstrate a whale's mating golf for everybody. <laughs> it always, every Is this your dinner? Yeah. I've gotten to the point where I now eat dinner before the meeting. The first couple of meetings, I said, oh, wait till I get home. <laughs> <laughs> then you didn't work out the third well. one where we got <laughs> until 10 30. No, I got home, yeah. I got home at 11. It's like, I don't think that. Not quite 11. Okay. I think we're ready to start up again. I think so. Okay, um, so on to town attorney. A comment. I thought we had discussed the formal report is just regular and not necessarily annually. Is that? I think you're right. Yeah, it was. I think this is the wording that Hillary suggested to make sure it can be more often. And that the town council can request a more often um, report, basically. So, I guess my thought is, if we just say regularly, then it's broad. But this is forcing it annually, at least. At least minimum, once a year. That's what we want. And that the town council okay. can be more can request more often. Okay. Because if it was just annually, they could say, "Well, I did my annual report. You'll see me next year." Um, did, you, did we say we do or do not want something about removal? That's a good question, yeah. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Something about removal. Oh. We talked about it a little while well, ago, and I thought we said we were going to put something in. Would that be in the contract? Yeah, it's, in, it, it's a majority vote to get rid of an attorney okay, or so a judge. Okay, so it can be built into the contract or it can be majority vote. So we don't get yeah. It's the opposite of appointing, it's unappointing. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one wanted to see that. <laughs> okay, I missed it. I don't think it flickered on. Yeah, I don't think you turned on your video on accident or anything. I think she's talking about unappointing. Mm -hmm. Unappointing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, municipal judge then? All the same. Yep, the same thing about allowing. I guess uh, you may have missed some of adding some of the word town in this one since you did in the previous one. I'm sorry, where are you? In 404, municipal judge. Like in 403, Hillary added the word town before oh, town council. council. Yes, gotcha. And so in 404, it's not written like that. So just for consistency. And in 05. Yeah, I've been kind of adding them as I go. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's in 05 as well. So. Yeah. 06. Maybe her computer got tired of writing town. Place. That's when you do like the autocorrect. You have to create a word, like just T turns into town. Find it in place. 
switch it back. Okay, um, 405, 406. So I believe it is at a point as it is today. Hired. Yeah, I think hired by the town manager. Yep. So 406, four was something that we had. Decided to change. Yeah, so 4064, I think, was the the wording that we had wanted and settled on with Debbie was for for, for conducting regular candidate elections. Right. Right. So that it, it limits the scope of the forms she's required to keep on hand. Right. Well, let's make a change. Okay. Cool. So that's in 4064. Okay. Um, that's it. Anything else in 406 besides hiring and forms for Canada elections? Okay. Um, any issues with 402? Basically, redistributing the authority to create and manage town departments based on who has those actual authorities to their respective sections. Okay, so yeah, we're good with your suggestion there, Hillary, on 402. Wait, that's not 402. That would have been 407. <laughs> 407. It's I'm okay with her suggestion on 501 to move it to transition. Yeah, we'll move that to transition. 502. Comment I had, Adam Kaminsky, which is leave it like it is, which is in five. 5025. Just leaving it as two thirds and not making it consistent with town manager. Right. We, we talked that one out pretty I know, that's what I said. I like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think 502 were good how it's written. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, six, ordinance. I guess going back to boards and commissions. Okay. Um, there are some charters have election commissions, which I think is part of redistricting things. I don't have anything to add in here right now, or if I even think it is, but I know that is a common commission that is detailed. And we had talked about having none of them detailed so the board could select them, but an election commission seems like a reasonable one. It would at least require there to be one. Yeah. Instead of the council itself setting district lines. Right. Yeah, so I would do a redistricting commission that's different than an election commission. Election commissions are kind of antiquated um, in my experience. Usually those tasks are all done by the clerk now. Okay, so probably more of a redistricting commission could be something yeah. that's developed every 10 years. So yeah. Some, potentially. Yeah. And it would be an appointed commission, just like the regular, the rest of the boards and commissions. Make sure people apply. I think that would have to be how it would work. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we're an elected commission. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you're going to you want to rely on a who does this as a profession right. rather than like people who. Make not that I'm mean, not lay people are great. You guys are lay people, um, <laughs> but it's just such a tricky, tricky constitutional subject. Typically, it's farmed out to a consultant. Yeah, and that's what Malcolm said. Yeah, is they hire a consultant that works with the town rather and, than having a separate commission, okay. or a separate board. And that process is laid out in the statute. Uh, no. It would be by ordinance. So currently, as the charter is drafted, it, the districting itself would occur by ordinance, and how redistricting would occur would be by ordinance, except for the broad framework that the charter includes. Okay. I brought it up because 
in one of our comments, uh, I think it was Thornton, I couldn't find the exact uh, place, but the board is dragging their feet on doing districts. If you have this commission doing it, then the board isn't doing that. So that takes the power from the board to do the districts and potentially not redraw the districts before an election. We had suggested a, having a like a time frame, like a hard time frame, like districts must be drawn by X number of days after or before a, an election, right? Like 180 days I or something? I think it has to be 180 days. It has to be 180 days. Yeah, 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 they need to be done by that, but if it's not approved, then what's the recourse? Mm -hmm. If we're gonna, if we have not yet decided if we're gonna do districts or state at large, then this should kind of be a yeah. hold until we we'll, finalize. We'll so track that. Well, yeah. plus this we're is just talking for about public comment before we decide because last week we decided to do. That's what I thought. I, I was doing the impression last week that we all yeah, voted, we, um, so I'm more really confused why we're going back on this because I thought we all voted well, unanimously last week that we were going to do districts. But we got legal counsel the day that maybe said that's not so yeah. great. Because, so. of because of the time frame. Because of the time frame. Well, can you stand on this page about how redistricting would work regarding your population growth? Right. I mean, that's an important thing to clarify. Yeah. yeah. And this one is just about existing boards and commissions. So, I mean, I'm, there, is there going to be another one where we're going to throw in a commission if we want it? We have that already. That was under the town... Or we were going to go council. back to it, though, because it was so big and there were things we had to discuss, if I remember correctly, right? But I thought as far as being able to appoint a new board or commission was already in. No, this would, if we wanted to require a board or commission, we'd do it in this article. In, right, but in the, Article 5. Okay. Right, if we want to require a new one. So that's why addition, we aren't coming back to this. And yeah, that's why it's itty-bitty, because we haven't put anything in it. But in addition... I thought we had something that they can always appoint a new. Right, that's what Yeah, that's in yeah, 502. Yeah, they can That's 502. Yeah. This just gives complete but power a, to the council to right. manage their boards, which Correct. I think is valid. But yeah. there's some. And then the other comment was about a strong planning commission, which I think would live in here, too. Right. That, I think, is going to be its own discussion. Yeah. We're yeah. ready to yeah. start that at this point. And also... We don't have on the schedule anywhere to discuss Article 6 or 10. I just noticed. Yeah. When you started going for 6, I said... Was it wasn't on the list today. That's right. That's probably my bad. Right. We probably didn't say 6 last week. Oh, oh, oh no. 6? Okay. It was initially scheduled for... Did we talk about 6 already? Did we already do it? Yeah, we did. That's ordinances. We've already been through 6. So you weren't here on that one. Yeah, yeah rewatch the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that explains six. Did I miss ten somewhere? So, is it all right then, even though if it's not on the agenda? Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, let's just clear this out so we can finish our six article review at least. <clears throat> I didn't. Oh, the only thing I had here. Oh, I know. Yeah, on the, on the meeting calendar. We have two Article 9s listed, apparently. Um, so really, the second Article 9 is Article 10. Oh, OK. And I, I Ah, there. Go. I see. OK. Thank you. Okay. Good. And so just, so were you asking if anyone has any comments on 6? Yeah. I just know that the cross-reference is what we're going to do in 501, or sorry, 601 may change. For 601? There's a cross-reference. Yes. Hillary, yes. Hillary. But I think Hillary has said that when she makes the cross-references, she will check them no, before no. it goes final. That's what I said. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Then 603, she called out a specific cross-reference. Right, and I have a comment that I agree with what she said. With the non-emergency ordinance to be approved. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um... Okay, anything from 601, 2, or 3? And then she had new... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. 604? No, no, keep going. Sorry. Okay. Um, so 604... Anyone? 
Hillary, your comment says that you did correct the inconsistency. Did. Okay. Perfect. Unless you wanted to leave it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding. Thank you. I think we're getting punchy. Okay. Um, so 604, anything else? 605. That would seem standard. 606. Codes by reference, we can just refer to other codes to adopt. That's fine. Looks good to me. 607. I'm sorry, 607 looks good to me. Okay, so yeah, 607, this was the from our request to codify Cora, even should it change. My question was, does this mean that Cora, as it exists on the day of passage of the charter, is that frozen in time for the town? Because the wording of as amended is not in there. Well, so if there are subsequent changes that limit or reduce public access, you're saying those don't apply. Okay, that's right. You're kind of, you're locking in Cora as it exists at the time of adoption of the charter. Okay. If it and it's at a minimum, so the town can be more transparent. Okay. Everyone good with that wording then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then the town has the ability to set fines and ordinances, fines and penalties for ordinance violations. Why would you want that? Actually, this was one of the questions I had for like 608. The maximum established by Colorado revised statutes for municipal ordinance violations, that one as written would mean we'd not we would not be allowed to levy larger fines for things like oil and gas violations. I don't think you'd be allowed to, right? Is that probably a question for Hillary? Um, not in your municipal court, you wouldn't. So the municipal court has a jurisdictional limit. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't think you could, uh, but you could bring it to district court. So then, no fine or sentence for violating. So, if I'm understanding, you'd want to get rid of shall not exceed the maximum so the town could punish people that the state doesn't think should be punished as harshly, or things, entities. Yeah, I think it would be difficult. To, yeah, that's, if that's even if they've got a maximum, way. yeah. But it's not a constitutional maximum, right? So it's like... It's a statute, but yeah. It may be a matter of statewide concern. I'd have to look at that. I'm not sure that you can vary that. Okay. So in that case, this section is kind of just boilerplate, just to lay out and include the wording specific. Yeah, it's laying out your maximum, sort of. You're not limiting what the town can do. Okay. So regardless, you couldn't have anything that exceeded the maximum. I don't believe so. I double check. Okay. Um, I think that's it then. Let's see. Cool. Um, yeah. Do you recap? Yeah. Let's do a recap real quick. All the way here. All right. So I'm going to put together the survey and send that out for feedback to the rest of the board. Or to the rest of the commission. Um, we are changing the limitation, or sorry, the, the number of signatures required for initiative and referendum to 5%. Um, are we doing 5% of registered voters, registered electors of the town? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 11042. We want to require the town clerk to give feedback on how to correct the form of the petition. 11083, change six months to 180 days. Uh, remove 204, since it's a repeat of what's in this section. Um, let's 
see, 11, 12, 5, we want to change that to 25% of votes cast for that position in the most in the preceding regular election. And then 11, 12, 11, 50%. Um, we're okay with moving 401 per Hillary's suggestion. And then the new 401, um, remove the definition of officer from section 4014 and modify the line of succession in 4015 to go mayor, mayor pro tem, council in order of seniority, then manager, and then manager's line of succession, and just end it there. Um, 402, majority vote of council in office, so it's four no matter how many people are present, or, yeah. um, and then 4021, um, removal also to for the majority in office, a vote for majority in office. 404, yeah, adding town and all of those. 4064, the only forms the town clerk is required to keep on hand are regular election forms. And regular have, candidate election, sorry. Any forms required for conducting a regular candidate election. Those are. And did we say and hiring? What is a clerk? Oh, okay, I thought I heard that though. All right, you know what? No, maybe I misheard something sorry. before. Um, no, the town clerk would be hired by the town manager. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, not forms for hiring. Okay, I thought there was. A, okay, yeah. basically all the forms included was campaign saying. finance. Yeah, the campaign finance filing forms and the signature forms for candidates. Yeah, we're seeing we're yeah. Start to start and finish. Yeah. And then 407, we will strike that section. And then 501, we'll move to the transition period. The transition section. <clears throat> I think that's it. I think six we agree with all the changes that were already made. Yeah, six was fairly recent, so. Did you want to go over what you did for the Article 11 at the beginning of the meeting? Huh? Article 11 at the beginning of the meeting? No. Oh. Uh, I included those. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, I have been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have many. The, yeah, that was the talking about the... <laughs> past my bedtime. <laughs> that was talking about the percentages. We oh, that about. was the percentages. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that's it, then. And if we are good to go, I'll call for adjournment. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Same bad time, same bad station. Yeah, me too. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm being... Feels worse than... Or goggles, actually. Feels tired than...